Alright, what's going on guys? Let's try back again here bringing another video. So this one's going to be a video talking about uh, Alistair Overeem. Um, recently he's had some trouble with his, uh, with his drug testing uh, before the Brock fight. And so I just wanted to do a video kind of talking about this topic and hear what, uh, what you guys think about this. So um, it appears as though he's had trouble with, um, with uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And um, he's gone to Holland because his, uh, his mom is, uh, is ill, unfortunately. Uh, glad, God bless her. Hopefully she gets better soon. Um, and uh, it looks like he, there was some confusion and he m maybe submitted a wrong, the wrong type of test, like he submitted a blood test instead of a urine sample. Um, and so he's got, got a few days to, you know, to get that in. And if he does and everything's good, then he'll be granted a conditional license and uh, you know for the Brock fight. So so don't worry, he he will be fighting as long as he passes his uh, urine um, test and everything. Um, and you know he'll be able to fight Brock. And then he's going to have two random uh, tests afterwards, just because kind of you know they kind of see it as like funny business because he didn't get his uh, you know his uh, tests in properly right away like they asked him to. It took him a little bit to do it. Um, now, Alistair Overeem has been a guy that for years has been accused of being on steroids. For years, people have said, you know, that he is or he isn't or whatever. You know, even, you know, people in, in the media and in the fight business, too, like uh, Vadim Fickelstein or Frankenstein, you know, uh, M1 Global um, manager for Fedor, he actually called uh, Alistair a steroid bully one time. <laughs> So, um, you know, I mean, that's, it, and, but, but really it just made him look stupid because what was happening was, was, uh, Alistar was calling out Fedor and saying he wanted to fight Fedor and that he would beat Fedor. And that's when Vadim called him a steroid bully and, and they basically didn't fight and they, and then one global wouldn't sign the fight. So, you know, that, that situation kind of, you know, that was kind of stupid of Vadim to call him that and to say that kind of stuff about him. You know, it just made it look like Fedor was even more scared. Um, so yeah, the topic of this video is or is Alistair, is, isn't Alistair Overeem on steroids. So do you guys think that he's actually taken stuff and do you think he has been for a while? Now, as many of you may know, in um, Japan, you are allowed pretty much to use steroids, pretty much. I mean, everybody knows that Mark Coleman, when he was fighting in Pride, he was on steroids the whole time, pretty much. I mean, there's videos of him raging out backstage after he lost the fear and stuff and I know everybody gets pissed off but but no no you gotta watch these videos and you can you can obviously tell he was juicing like crazy um, but but has Alistar been doing it you know uh, this is an interesting topic and of course it's pure speculation because we don't know for sure one way or another if he has um, what I will say is this is that um, he pretty much it, it, it's not like he just put on muscle overnight you know people make it sound like he just put on you know one day he was skinny and the next day he was uh, the Hulk you know he was huge um, that's not how it went exactly, you know, he, he fought for, you know, he pretty much fought regularly, and, and while he was fighting, he was always weight training. Now, it, at a, it got to a point in his career where he was having so much trouble making 205 as a light heavyweight when he was younger, that he had to go to heavyweight. He just had to. He couldn't, you know, the weight cuts were so bad for him, they were affecting his performance, and he was losing, and he felt like, you know, like, I just can't do it anymore. My body, my frame is too big. I mean, look at the guy. He's like 6'5 now. You know, I mean, he's grown like crazy. So, you know, obviously he wouldn't be able to, at 6'5, how long are you going to be able to make 205? I mean, come on. It's just, it's really, really hard to do for a guy like that, especially when they're, you know, they want to be healthy and they want to be strong and strength trained and everything. Your, your weight just goes up naturally if you're a bigger guy like that. So, over the course, um, since 2007, basically, he's put on all this weight. So it's been a good solid four, four and a half, five years now since he's, you know, that he's, that he, it's taken him to put on this size. Now he has had it for a couple. So let's say he gained the muscle over the course of about three years. Is that possible to do? Well, if he was cutting down to 205 and he had to cut a lot of weight, I think he said at, uh, that he was at about 230 or so, and then he would cut down for, you know, for his fights at 205. So he'd try to lose like 30 pounds to get there. Geez, that, that must've been tough for him. So, um, Really, when you look at it, I mean, what does he weigh now? He's, you know, he's 250, pretty much. I mean, he's not, he's not Brock. He's not like 260, 264, 265. He's about, you know, like 250 pounds, roughly, maybe a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit less at other times. But, you know, he really has only gained about 20, 25 pounds of muscle. For a pro athlete who's got a, you know, a proper trainer, and when you hear his explanation of it, like he says, you know, I eat 
eight times a day or like five huge meals a day you know and then like little snacks in between he just eats like like crazy and you know the right type of food like tons of protein you know um brown carbohydrates probably to fuel his workouts stuff like that so that he you know he can keep bulking up keep putting on that muscle you know in my opinion you know it is suspicious this whole situation he's gone through recently but i can't say that uh, for sure i mean he's never tested positive on a, on a steroid test ever so um in my opinion, I kind of have to, you know, it's innocent until proven guilty, you know. And also, his explanation of it, it's obvious that he knows what to do. He knows how to put on muscle. And, and you know, on a pro athlete like that who, you know, is big like that, six foot five, I don't think it would really be that hard to fill out in a few years like that. Even if you're training for MMA every day and you're, you know, you're, you're going for your runs and you're working on your cardio and you're doing all that kind of stuff. If you're, all you really have to do is throw in a couple days of, you know, huge leg presses, squats, um, your bench press, you're going to have your deadlifts, um, you know, military presses, you know, all these big compound exercises, uh, weight movements. These types of movements, if you're eating right and you're doing a lot of weight, you're going to put on muscle like that. And over three or four years, it's entirely possible to do that without steroids. Is it easier to do it with steroids? Oh, yeah. I mean, one year with steroids, you can do that. But, you know, naturally, yeah, it's going to take you three, four years to get up there. And and it was a natural progression. If you go back and you look at his fights, he wasn't always, uh, you know, um, a juggernaut. You know, he when he first was working up, he was like, you know, he wasn't as big. He wasn't as bulky. <coughs> and, you know, it, it was a progressive thing. So, I just kind of want to do this video to give my opinion on it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think he's juicing or don't you? My opinion, I say I, I personally don't think he is. Um, I guess we'll find out in the next six to eight months if, uh, you know, for sure. But, I mean, he fought in strike force. He fought. He's never tested positive. So I have to say that I think it was a natural gain for him. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if, if Alistair really is the type of person that would do that. So... I tend to lean to more towards I don't think he's doing it, you know, I don't think he's, we know for a fact that guys like Brock Lesnar, you know, did in the WWE, there's no question about that, and uh, Shane Carwin was on the list for, I think, HGH or, or Test, I don't know which which of the two, um, but I really, for some reason when it comes to Alistair, I, I believe him, and I don't think he has, he's been fighting the whole time, never tested positive, and it was a gradual gain, it wasn't just all of a sudden overnight, although people seem to think it was. That's it for this video, guys. This is a discussion, so please let me know what you think. I'd like to hear all your opinions. That's it for now.